Hey everybody, it's Jesse from Engineer Motorsport Solutions and today I got some exciting updates about the next generation of 2.3 liter EcoBoost engines. So fortunately uh, today we got in a S650 2.3 liter EcoBoost rod and piston and I decided we, it should be cool for me to make a video comparing you know the Gen 1 2.3 rod and piston versus the Gen 2 uh, 2.3 rod and piston. So uh, I guess we'll start with uh, the rod itself. So uh, the rod, so here's a Gen 1, here's a Gen 2. So immediately we can tell this Gen 2 is quite a bit thicker. So when we measure the Gen 1 in this direction, this is about 19 millimeters. And of course it does have some taper down here and get larger, but this, this longer neck region of it's 19 millimeters. Whereas the most narrow part of this rod is 22 millimeters, yep, and uh, or 22 millimeters up here and goes down to about 25 millimeters here. So a lot thicker in this direction. Something else we might note is the wrist pin or the pin bore is 23 millimeters on the Gen 2 versus 22.5 on this Gen 1 rod. The big end is 55 millimeters on both thickness is the same so I would imagine our rod bearings we're going to be able to reuse or use the same rod bearings as the Gen 1 uh, but the rod is definitely also five millimeters longer and unfortunately because of this you know usually a longer rod would be like a good thing for a rod ratio but unfortunately Ford updated the stroke of this new 2.3 from a 94 millimeter stroke to 102 millimeter stroke so now we've went from where the Gen 1, we had a rod ratio of about 1.58. Now our rod ratio with this longer rod is about 1.51. So a slight step backwards there. Uh, I know what Ford's going for. They're wanting instant torque and that's exactly what the car has. But from a racing perspective or from an engine builder perspective, they went, went backwards there a little bit, giving us a worse uh, rod ratio. It's also worth noting too that the Gen 2 2.3 rod, kind of like the Ranger, looks to have had a, a phosphate coating on the small end of it. And what that phosphate coating does is it's actually a crystal structure that grows on the outside of the material. And it's like a sponge. So when oil gets on that, it'll soak into that crystal structure. So this should always have some form of lubrication caught in that phosphate uh, coating on this. Um, I think that might be all we want to talk about for the rod. I think I've covered everything on that. But uh, overall, yeah, a good upgrade. So we've definitely got a beefier, better made rod, but we did lose some rod ratios. So that's the big takeaways from this guy. Now we'll move on to the piston. So we have the Gen 1 87.5 millimeter bore piston and the Gen 2 84 millimeter bore piston. And I measured both of these at diameter nominal, which you can see in the Grafal patch. On this one, they've actually got uh, two spots we would usually say DN and then D2 right but diameter nominal is the most important part on the outside of a piston skirt because pistons aren't round and they aren't cylindrical they're barrel shaped and they're actually oval so you have to measure them in specific places so when I measured this one I got right at like 83.9 versus when I measured this one I get like 87.44 and now that is with calipers so there's a degree of error there but just rough measurements you know that's what we got on them but the magic in this piston is deeper than that. Uh, this is some diesel technology that was really starting to become a thing when I left Molly, and that was two-piece welded pistons. And that's pretty much where you would machine the crown of the piston and the skirt of the piston in two separate operations. But what that lets you do is it lets you put a cooling gallery in the bottom side of the crown of the piston. Then you bring those together and you friction weld them together. You know, you spin both of these at high RPM or you spin one at high RPM and stick it against the other one. Then you lock and stop and that welds the piston hat pieces together. Then you would do your finish OD turning and ring grooves. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure. It, it's been a while. I think you would finish the OD turning after that, but it's been a while. But what's cool is instead of just squirting oil up on the bottom of the crown and hoping that that oil cools it, well, now that oil goes into this internal gallery and can now flow down and under the crown and make like a pocket of oil cooling. Really cool to see that come full circle to a gasoline piston because I was so used to only seeing that for diesel engines. Um, other things about the piston, it looks to have a hard anodized top ring groove. 
Um, no DI bowl, but I would say the whole top of the piston's a bowl. And I tried to find this, and I couldn't. But in 2018, 2017, when Molly made me my first custom piston, this is exactly what it looked like. We just scalloped the whole top of it. So it's really cool to see that get actually used in a production setting. Um, I haven't did like a compression height check against both of these because I don't have anything to really measure that accurately. But it would seem that, the, or for sure, the compression height's different. And that's just based on the material underneath the ring lands to the uh, top of the uh, pin bore. Um, so I can definitely tell that's a thinner, that's changed a little bit. And uh, that's comparing the ring packs that look to be the same thickness. What that tells me is this piston may or may not be stronger than this one. It's really hard to say. That internal cooling gallery is going to do wonders for this and how much heat you're going to be able to wick away using the oil. Problem is there's less meat above that uh, pin bore, which inherently means this piston should be maybe a little weaker. But with that said, I don't think that this is a weaker piston, guys. I'm just talking if all things were equal. I don't know the material difference in this. This one's about two ounces lighter than this piston, but it's also three and a half millimeters smaller in bore, so we don't know yet. This has some really cool technology in it that I'm really excited to see how far we can push. Um, me and Ryan are both pumped about these upgraded rods we're thinking there's no reason we can't do 500 uh, horse 500 torque on these rods questions if the piston will handle it and i would say they've definitely put the tech into the piston to handle it but we don't know what these ring gaps and other crucial uh measurements and clearances are on the piston or on the the engine so that's tbd um let's see i want to make sure i've covered everything that i thought was cool it would seem I have. Um, so yeah, guys, that's pretty much the breakdown from the Gen 2 2.3 versus Gen 1 2.3 piston and rods. If you have any questions, put them down in the comments or reach out to us and we will be sure to share them with you uh, or get back to you about your comments. Uh, we're going to get this piston over to Molly so they can get a 3D scan of it and start working on our Gen 2 2.3 liter uh, EMS custom spec piston. And uh, fortunately, I made some good contacts at the shootout with the Wiseco guys and the Boosalon guys, so I'll be talking to them about getting us some better rods made too. But until then, if you need any parts, you need any tuning, you need any engines, make sure you check out our website at www.engineermotorsportsolutions.com and be sure to follow us on TikTok, Instagram, and Facebook too. See you later, guys.